Well, hello again. I hear I see radio listeners. Uh, it's me, Justin, back again. You may recall, if you listened to the previous episode of this show, uh, I hear I see radio 133. Uh, that was a live recording of BCJ's P's on WZRD radio station in Chicago. Uh, I mentioned that there was an interview segment that happened live that uh, I didn't have a recording of last month when I released the podcast episode. Well, I've got great news for you. I now have a recording of that interview segment. Uh, So that's what you're going to hear now. I debated, like, what do I do with this? Do I just go back and edit the episode and insert that in there? It's like, well, no, people already listen to it that doesn't make any sense why why did i even entertain the thought i can't i can't explain it sometimes i can't i can't control the crazy ideas that get up in this brain of mine uh so what's what's a better option Uh, i'm just gonna play it for you now so about 20 minutes of an interview i think it's fun uh one of the mics wasn't on (laughs) it's it's really noisy you can hear people talking in the background it's uh it's fun it's a fun little chaotic 20 minute clip uh, so thanks again to Alejandro and everybody else at WZRD for having us back in June, uh, June 13th. Uh, and yeah, I hope you enjoy just a little bit more. I do plan on uh, setting up another interview this month to, for, for a proper new episode of I Hear I See Radio. But for now, uh, we're going to call this I Hear I See Radio episode 133 and a third more of BCJ's P's on WZRD. All right. Thanks, guys. See you later. And you are listening to WZRD 88.3 FM, The Wizard. This is Thursday night, and uh, you have been listening to BJSPS on The Wizard. Uh, do stick around. Uh, they're going to talk a bit, and then we're going to play some music. <laughs> And uh, you're listening to WZRD 88.3 FM. Uh, the Wizard is Thursday Night Live, and uh, we'd like to thank our musical guest, BCJSPS. Uh, thank you so much, guys, for sticking around. Uh, thank you. Thank, thank you for having us. For those who don't know, the awkward name is uh, because of the initials, right? Is that correct? Yes, uh, it is. I'm not hearing myself in the headphones here. I well, that's... What he's saying is that that is correct. The B is for Brian. The C is for Comer. The J's are for Justin and Jason. And the P's are for Palomara and Pencrot. Uh, Jason Palomara, the third member of this duo, yeah. who is not with us today. He's elsewhere. Yeah, he's too busy to play with us most of the time. But yeah, you still keep him in his honor? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes, well, since this is not, uh, no one can really see us at the radio station. Uh, sometimes we play with uh, a cardboard. Yeah, this mic seems to be working, but uh, we play with a cardboard cutout of Jason that sits in between us on stage. But we don't have that with us tonight. Or we we could just lie. People are only listening. It's here. Jason himself is here, actually. He, he's just a mute. <laughs> yeah. It's sort of like uh, he's shy. It's sort of like Crosby, Stills, Nash and Young, and. And hard <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, oh, I guess, you know, pe- people always ask me, like, oh, what kind of, what, what band you have on this week? And then, of course, oh, what kind of genre do they play? You guys, uh, how would you describe your music? If uh, someone said, hey, you know, hey, you play music? You're like, yes, we do. And you're like, oh, what kind of music do you play? So, wh- what? Do you, how do you like to describe it? It's probably... Um I tend I tend to be like super literal about it. Like uh, I have a saxophone and Brian plays guitar, uh, and that gives people some preconceived notions because they think the saxophone is all jazz, which we're not really playing jazz at all. I don't think. I I am. It's sort of inspired by jazz, but not. There, yeah, there's some jazz influence, of course. Like uh, all improvisation in music uh, has to you have to care about jazz a little bit. I think. Wait, speaking of that word improvisation, what percentage would you say of our music is improvised? I, I suppose it depends on how you define it. 
Uh, I think we have a good number of uh, beats, important things that we know we need to hit, maybe at a certain time. Uh, and we have general ideas. Hey, we're in this key, or we know that this is the note that's kind of droning in the background. Right. Um, and the specifics of how we get from point A to point B can change pretty yeah, pretty dramatically. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, the, the sets that I play with Brian are, are probably the least improvised of the music that I do most of the time. Have we answered the question yet? I don't think we have. What kind of music do we play? Um, a journalist in Iowa at Iowa Public Radio used the term anti-jam for a set that we played last year, and I like that. I don't, Alejandro, when you hear the term anti-jam, what does that say to you? What would you expect? <laughs> You, you hear, yeah, if someone says they're in a jam band, you sort of like, okay, long, drummy, <laughs> bluesy type riffs. And I guess you could say, yeah, anti, because it's completely opposite of like the musical spectrum of what a jam band does. Like you, you guys are working together, you know, but it's sort of like an industrial version of, 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 of music, sort of like, let's make some organized chaos, you know? Like, yeah, 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 definitely. And you like jam bands, Brian. Well, to be fair, <laughs> I like... Some. I, 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 I like good music, no matter who makes it. Yeah. Or I, I, good music, whatever. I like music I like, mm-hmm. no matter uh, who makes it. Uh, I am partial to uh, Fish, but... Uh, uh, a, as a general rule, jam bands are not uh, necessary. <laughs> They're not necessarily the thing that I say that I, you know, yeah. I gravitate towards. I, I'd like to think I have a, a pretty wide uh, spectrum of music that I enjoy. Yeah, and he is drinking out of a fish uh, water bottle tonight. It was it was a gift. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I'm not I'm not saying that you should be ashamed of it or anything. No, no, I was uh, going to thank Kristen for my beautiful <laughs> gift full of water. Hey, with uh, with you guys, the way you you make your music is sort of. I notice you have like sort of like sound clips. Is that sort of to signify like okay, yes, yeah, so we're going into a new song now? <laughs> Kind of, yeah. Those are a big part of the structure. Um, when we started, we started doing this project about five years ago. We recorded a bunch of improvisations, and then we kind of crafted those. We took the recordings of the improvisations, crafted them into our own separate albums. So there's an album, a BCJSP's album that Brian has produced, and one that I have produced. And to sort of like tie the improvised clips into like a cohesive piece. I took uh, voicemails that I had received while I was working on this album and sort of structured those into, like, the pieces. So, especially for my parts of that set, at least, the, the, the voice clips you're hearing are pretty much, like, the beginning and end of a piece. And with uh, the concept that you mentioned that you have... You had three members, and you sort of worked with the same music, but you make you made you each made your own out of it. Mm-hmm. It's sort of uh, I think of back to the of the Kiss albums, where they were, all four members made their own albums. Oh, yeah. Are we gonna with um, with the B C B C J S P S? Are we gonna have the records with? each of your faces on there so they know okay this is brian's record and this is uh (laughs) i have the cds in my car i forgot to bring them in here but there's actually a lot of faces on the covers of the albums uh but they're not our faces at all no no not not all of them are human no no i i opted for i opted for birds little uh budgies as well as uh cereal mascots um cornflakes rooster and do you have any birds on on the soundtrack on on your uh, your pieces any uh roosters any <laughs> birds any chirpings i i don't have any birds uh, no roger same. mcguinn no no no, <laughs> no i my uh my spoken uh clips are taken from a poem uh uh 
by Thea Brown, uh, who's a uh, poet that we met, uh, that I met when I lived in Iowa, uh, and uh, Conceal by Virtue or Conquest is the name of the poem that um, uh, that is read during um, my favorite little prayer. And uh, her poetry is kind of how I I structured the the whole album. And there is a line in the poem that uh, uh, talks about clambering budgies pecking cereal boxes in the corner, which I thought was uh, just kind of a wild line. And so I tried to put that on the cover while maintaining the same kind of structure that I'd seen on Justin's so that we could have a BCJ's P's through line. Yeah. Here's how our album color covers look. Yeah, how long has um, BCJSPS been together? Uh, 2019 is when we started the trio. Yeah, yeah. And just, just to clarify, so everyone knows, BC J's P's. It's I know it's it's a ridiculous name, <laughs> but it's going to make it easier for the listeners to find it if they can say it right. No, probably not. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the trio started in 2019, and it's like a sort of a growth from a duo that preceded it. Yeah, it's a mutation of the duo, which was called JCJP. <laughs> and that started in, I'd, I'd say, 20... 1415 ish. It has has um, the sound <coughs> drastically evolved? Has it changed from uh, from the two piece to the trio now? I think so. Brian has probably more of a perspective on that. I I would say so. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, yeah. Well, well, okay. So. It was, JCJP was me on saxophone and Jason, our third member, again, he's here, but quiet, uh, on violin and still with a ton of like extra electronic stuff. Um, And so with the addition of Brian on primarily guitar. With with analog pedals. With analog pedals. (laughs) We're passing the mic back and forth because this mic sounds way better. (laughs) Uh, How many pedals? I probably make use of about <laughs> 15, maybe 17. Um, yeah, that sounds about right. Are you going to add to your collection? <laughs> I have a larger collection. I don't use everything for this. Not all of it uh, fits. I, um, if I plugged in everything, there would be a lot of extra hum. Um, but, but I, you know, I wanted to use a wah for years and i've just never found a place for it wow and that's so, like the the basic pedal that everyone has is a wah pedal and yeah. i mean i have one I, <laughs> but i just i can't i can't fit it into the rig an extra uh, an extra pound that you have to carry around with that pedal <laughs> <laughs> i'll need another suitcase yeah. if you guys travel overseas man you be expensive because all the extra luggage that you have to bring with uh, all your gear yeah i'd probably have to rent like a speaker setup i think I don't want to fly with that. No, we'd have to we'd have to find a good backline somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this tour is getting expensive. <laughs> I'd say that uh, s- the sound has evolved. Uh, in one way, it's gotten much louder. That's one very obvious evolution. <laughs> right, with the absence of uh, a violin, which I think even even Mike has a tendency to, to be somewhat delicate. Uh, I think we've kind of leaned into noisier elements, which, which was great for me. That's exactly what I wanted to do. You know, like you mentioned, you know, the anti jazz, all right, (laughs) you think we're jazz, just (laughs) stick around. Yeah. Have have you played to a bunch of jazz people and (laughs) you run out of the room? Um, I don't know. The only jazz people that I really talk to regularly are pretty open-minded, actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't played for a, a, a group of dedicated jazz folks since, probably since I was studying jazz. 
specifically, and it was a jazz concert. Where, where do you usually get um, on a bill? What kind of musicians do you usually play with? Just like a bunch of other experimental noise type people? Yes. Uh, this past fall, we uh, split a bill with what, M. Denny, and uh, she's quite noisy Very and nice. uh, experimental. She's great. Um, <coughs> we also uh, split... I. I we also split a bill with me solo. I did uh, uh, an hour-long uh, uh, doom metal piece that was wow. written by uh, James Romig for Mike Scheidt, uh, the guitarist in Yob. Um, and I was able to premiere that through through the Midwest. Do the doom people get into it or like ah. yes <laughs> yeah they're uh, a an enthusiastic uh, crowd they're great. Well, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure, hey, it's loud. Yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, when we played that show in Galesburg, some people showed up specifically for the Doom, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, and we're still in contact. I think, oh, nice. you know, not only not only did they enjoy the Doom, I, I, they they liked our set, yeah. which, which is awesome. You're exposing yeah. your, your, your music to, you have a bunch of long-haired freaks in the, in the audience. You know? <laughs> if, I could, if I could grow my hair long, I would. I would. I used to have really long hair. Actually, when we recorded the uh, initial album, my hair was pretty long. Yeah, you can't see me right now. I have very oh, long hair. Beautiful long Actually, hair. Actually, I'm bald. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what can we expect from you guys? Uh, do you have any gigs coming up? Uh, you guys, are you going to release uh, the triple box set? of? Uh... You know, the box set, I think, was originally what we were going to call the three of it. That's at least what I was pitching it. Oh, really? Yeah. I the box set. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. I don't know that the third album will. Uh, I'm not sure where it is in its production. So I. I wouldn't. Uh, uh, if I were waiting for that, I'd be excited to continue to. <laughs> Do you think uh, people could find it on the dark web? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, Jason's been really quiet over here in the corner, and we're talking about his album, which doesn't exist yet. And he's 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 being really coy about it. <laughs> um, you could try looking on the dark web. I, I don't know if like I know that he started working on it, so maybe some of it has leaked. You know, his like he logged in on public Wi-Fi or something. Somebody got it off of a, a illegal air dropping. So he's he talks about it briefly. Uh, the he runs a group out of. Uh, the, Indiana University, Purdue University of Indianapolis, except that you got they it. may not be still called that now. Uh, but uh, his uh, group called the Dis Ensemble has a very active social media presence as well as a very active YouTube channel. And they, uh, last night at midnight, or this morning at midnight, they released uh, their video, first of three parts uh, in our collaboration uh, last fall when we when we played with them at the I can't remember uh, the okay so we're talking about the tour that we did last fall your question was what can you expect from us but this this does relate the past is the future you know um, it, that place was called the amp at 16 tech right in Indianapolis yeah so that's something you can expect to see soon is if you go on YouTube and look at the Dis Ensemble page, Dis Ensemble is the name of this group that our partner Jason uh, directs at his university. Uh, yeah, as Brian was saying, they release YouTube videos on a pretty consistent basis. They record like every concert they do, every rehearsal they do, and they like put it together into little like, you know, five, 10, 15 minute clips. Um, but they're running, you know, roughly six months behind. So the stuff we were doing with them back in, that would have been late October, uh, is just coming out now. So if you find them, this ensemble on YouTube, you'll see right now a video of us rehearsing with them, which I felt was interesting to see from a third person perspective. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember doing it, but seeing it uh, was interesting. It's interesting to take this kind of music and like have a how many people are in that group like 20 wow More than that. yeah like 20 plus college students playing like their own instruments as well as a bunch of electronic noisy stuff on top of it <laughs> it was it was a yeah unique experience so 
soon on their YouTube, there will be a video of that performance, which I think I'm, I've been looking forward to it since October because the recording that we tried to make at the show didn't work out. So we don't have a recording of it. So I'm, I got to see the video. video. Yeah. Cool. Sounds good. If people want to follow you guys, what's the best, most updated social media site? Uh, well, uh, Bandcamp is where you can hear all all our tunes, uh, and you can find that linked with the uh, our original duo, the JCJP, uh, as well. I do my best to find interesting things for Instagram. <laughs> I find it to be the least uh, s- stressful uh, of social media sites, and we are at BCJSPS. <laughs> Which is nice. I guess no one's stolen that domain yet. So. <laughs> nobody, nobody had it, yeah. No numbers at the end or anything. <laughs> you guys are lucky. <laughs> so, yeah, that is how it's spelled, B-C-J-S-P-S. That's the spelling. The pronunciation, again, is B-C-J-S-P-S. So it's like the J and the P are plural, you know? Right. <laughs> but, yeah, Instagram, Brian runs that. Uh Thanks. Some Facebook, some YouTube. Yeah, we're on all that, all that stuff. But uh, yeah, Bandcamp, Instagram. I'd reiterate that. There's also a link tree that you set up. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, that's what link tr dot e <laughs> slash b b c j s p s. I think. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, we don't really have anything like on the schedule right now because no. this was a rescheduled radio date from January. And uh, Justin is in another trio called uh, the Wombat Trio, and they are planning out their uh, their fall tour. Now, now is that one actually a trio, <laughs> or is it someone? Uh, <laughs> I believe that one's actually a trio. Well, Justin, yeah, yeah, that that is a trio that performs live as a trio. Um, no silent members there. <laughs> yeah, we we are planning on uh, Wombat is going to play in Chicago. That will be like late November. I want to say that November twenty second or twenty fourth. So that's a ways off. But related project Wombat. That's actually much quieter because <laughs> the saxophone's not amplified in Wombat. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. I guess uh, you have one more set for us. Yeah, we got you know twenty or so minutes left of music that yeah. we can play for you. Sounds good. Yeah, you're listening to the Wizard WZRD, and we've been speaking with uh, BCs, Js, Ps, almost. <laughs> the, the C is singular <laughs> on the Wizard. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Stick around. <laughs> 